and it's autofocus, so it does it. Right, so I, and why did I not do it the first time? Um, because as you click and hold the button, yeah. it's focusing for you, it's doing everything you need to do because it's on auto. So I just need to click. You need to click and hold. And hold. Yeah, and if you want to look at them. No, no, that's that far too complicated. Yeah. Careful. Be very careful. Be very careful. Okay, so what we're going to do, I want all of Harold's army lined up along this line here. Okay, could I have William's army down here, please? Guys, over to you. What's your first shot, please? From Harold. From either. Okay, we want Harold's army looking tired from the long walk. Harold's army looking tired, please. Right, guys, come on, we need a good shot. Taking them outside was very important. I think for some pupils it just reinforces an account in their head, which means that we can then go forward and they can then draw out why did William win. The gifted and talented were looking at that, why interpretations take place, and therefore they were selecting the shots that they wanted. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, should we do that one first? Because that's the uh, We've been set as groups, so me and Jordan are from a historian's point of view, and what we have to do is make a documentary explaining the Battle of Hastings from our point of view. I think those two sources say different things. Because um, they were from different sides, so they're different um, views of it. They're from different sides of different views of it, that's exactly it. The gifted and talented pupils, there's quite a difference, you know what I mean? And we'll have Jordan, who is kind of, you know, can be a bit too cool for school, and we we'll really want to engage him. Um, there's somebody like Riddy, for instance, just quite shy, but yet she has so much to offer. Um, people such as Tanvir, for instance, who are even further above that, they need to be stretched even further. We've got to set high challenge so that they progress in their own learning as much as we'd want all the other pupils to progress in their own learning as well. We're going to the Hounslow Education Centre. Today is the meeting of the history representatives of the Gifted and Talented Forum. So therefore there are forums for each of the Key Stage 3 subjects. Um, and this is the history one today. We're going to meet a colleague um, who is the head of Gifted and Talented at Hounslow. The sessions that we're doing today, I'm going to be sort of sharing some things that I've been looking at. So I'm going to show them a little bit of uh, the work that Tanvir and Jordan did. William's cavalry charge uphill. They are stopped by Harold's army. They retreat. William explains his strategies. They charge uphill again. Harold's army stay. But then they follow William. William's army surrounds them and kills them. Remains lost. These guys were doing the historian's view um, of it, so trying to be a bit more balanced. Significantly, they had not said that William used the trick of retreating. The Harold's one, they said they didn't mention it, but then the William of Normandy version, he did say that. Now the key thing for me was that those, even though it doesn't maybe look as if they've done a heck of a lot, they've actually, there's a massive amount of thinking going on as they were doing that. So I'll just show you how we can do some of this. At their best, these forums are exactly as today, examples of teachers coming in with their own practice, sharing them with others, and then having the chance to um, explore what that might look like in a different school. And also, it just gives people a chance to concentrate on one quite narrow, specialised group of pupils who are often not in priority in everyday um, school life. This is uh, some of Tanvir's work. Um, he has a great kind of turn of phrase, and I think it's one of these things that 
Um, I think he is the touch of the historian about him. First of all, he'd been preparing for the invasion since January. That's nine months. The Duke put together an army consisting of 700 ships, 7,000 men and 2,000 horses. He'd split his soldiers into three main groups, a useful way to attack from all sides. And you could nearly see kind of you know, people going, ah, yeah, I would have done that. One of the targets that I've, that I've given him is, is this idea of trying to sort of to not so much tell the story, but in a causation essay to really look at how does that evidence show why William won? I want to really make sure that maybe the next piece of causation writing isn't the narrative base, perhaps, that this one is. I mean, progression isn't straightforward, do you know what I mean? Jo Jordan's, for instance, I think his oral contributions have, have, a, have a, first of all, have increased significantly, which is, which, is, which is great, but also they've increased in depth. On the other hand, is, is, is written work, although, I mean, he's, he's kind of said, for instance, Harold's army being tired and things like this, they've lost people from the other battle which took place at Stamford Bridge. He hasn't, he hasn't got the precision, you know what I mean? He hasn't said, but why did that help William win? I think if Jordan could tape this, he would perhaps maybe explain a lot in a lot more detail, and that's what we've been seeing in class. But yet, when it comes to it, we, we do need to have these written assessments as well. Well, as GNT coordinator, uh, quite often I go and talk with teachers and if they want to share some ideas or get some ideas on what they can do to uh, uh, challenge them or able within the class. And that's, that's what I'm doing with Ruben today, just to sort of share some ideas and go through some things that he's got, he's got planned. In a way, I learn a lot from talking with him as well. It's sort of a two-way process. <laughs> You knocked at the door. I do, I'm All very right. polite. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. Um, why did William win the Battle of Hastings? So Tanvir did a very well explained story. Right. Mm. Not why did William win. Yeah. Now, the thing about it was that he has actually synthesised this knowledge mm -hmm. very, very well and it's a deeper understanding. But what he didn't do was to link that. Yeah. He could when we discussed yeah. it, but he didn't yeah. link it yeah. back yeah. to the question. Yeah. So. That's his next stage then. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. That's his this next is stage. the thing. And see the next couple of lessons then. It, yeah. it's, it's looking at um, what makes a good Black Death story. Right. And what I really want for the, for the highest level is for them to write a really good piece of historical fiction. Right. And that's going to include you know, the relationships between characters, integrating symptoms, integrating historical fact with a great story, and then also talking about kind of the short-term effects and the long-term effects. It's chronology, but it's a more complex chronology than just it. So it's consequences. Yeah. Looking at yeah. why are, they, why are yeah. some consequences yeah. more, more important than others. So it's exactly the right task for Tanvir, who's got to move on from the narrative that he was doing before into meshing that with some kind of evaluative That's it. work as That's well. It. So what sorts of things could I be doing then within the lesson to, to kind of to, to enable that to happen? Um, you'd need to provide him, I think, with a good, a good example that maybe he could right. then deconstruct. Right. Okay. So, so to deconstruct, and he mm. then identifies yeah. the elephant. Yeah. Elephants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> identifies the elephant. If he yeah. identifies yeah. the yeah. elephants, yeah. that would be fairly okay. impressive. Yeah. yeah. That'd be easy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. So he identifies the the elements yeah. within it. Mm. Right. They're on. So what about um? Ready. She, she's very quiet. She's very quiet. There's a lot of kind of well, I don't know what to do, or I don't know what mm. to do, and mm. and in a way, you know, I know, you know, you've talked about this, this idea of G and T pupils needing to be sort of resilient, mm. nearly, and this that's kind of, it. That's that sometimes it. Yeah. when they when they do find something that's difficult, yeah. then that becomes mm. all right. Well, that's it. I'm giving yeah. up type yeah. thing. Especially, there is it, you know, research shows it is an issue with girls. This right. Sort of learned helpless. Right. This learned helplessness, where if something is difficult, then. You give up. It's almost sort of taking a role where you're reassuring her. It's yeah. okay to find something difficult. Yeah. It's quite normal. That's how you learn. But even if it's just a comment or a question, right. um, or even to do with with pairing or grouping or who she's working with, right. um, some way okay. of, of, of of supporting of supporting her. Dead on. Okay. Now, what we're going to be looking at today, we're going to understand what medieval people thought caused the Black Death, and why they might have thought that. So the first one we're going to hear from is Father William Goodfellow. I am Father William Goodfellow and I am so sorry that I'm here with such worrying news in such a lovely parish of Lambton. 
I'm here to tell you in my conversation with the Bishop of Winchester, we know what to do. We need to repent of our sins, we need to say extra prayers, and we should walk bare feet through the town, and we should also whip ourselves. Good luck, and may God go with you. Now see what I wonder, right? See here. See Father William Goodfellow. Now what what do you think? Why does he think in that way? Um, he's like he he's like a father, so like he's in the church most of the time and then um in the Bible it says that um swearing is bad and thinking. So therefore then he's adopted sort of his thinking, okay? Now the nice thing that we've done there, okay, is that you've explained an awful lot about medieval life. That if we'd have just done that at the very start of the year, we wouldn't have known the half of that, sure would Okay? So for instance, if you look at that there, what I think a medieval village looked like, hey, look what you can do now. You can even say what's going on in that man's head. Isn't that brilliant? Okay, I think that's class. You have confidence in yourself. Okay, that's brilliant. It's great stuff. Okay? Okay, now, many people's in this class? 25, right, now. Who are the mathematicians among us? Because I'm certainly not. I can't, I can't count oh, above 10. Okay? 25 divided by 3. 8. It's going to be about 8, isn't it? 1, stand up. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. A third of people die. Hold on. See in the village. Who would have been friends with this man? William. Okay, William. Now, how do you think William would have been feeling? Happy. He'd be feeling happy if he's your friend. Oh, no, he would He'd be, be feeling sad. sad, okay. Who were you in the village? Richard the Bailiff. Richard the Bailiff. He made you work. Yeah, is that what you said? How would you have felt when Richard died? Happy. There you go. It's a bit of, the Black Death's a bit of a weird thing. What I would like us to do Read pages 30 and 31, okay. and then in the middle of a single page, write down the effects of the Black Death. What, what Tanvir's going to be looking at is he's going to be looking at what a leading historian has discussed about the effects. Now, the interesting thing about this is that this is a narrative like Tanvir is doing, but there's explanation, there's a real why within it. Um, a lot of them will migrate to places where it was, um, like, more under control and more organised. Right. right, okay, so that's quite different, quite a different effect that people moved about. Now, what does that mean? How could villains move? Because villains weren't allowed to move, were they? So therefore there must have been a change, okay, in what's going on. Now you've underlined something here. Self-help seemed not thus desirable, but urgent. And this was true for the structures of belief. What is he saying there that was the biggest change? Because this is his biggest change. Um, that you weren't exactly independent, but you need to be able to support yourself. Right. Do you think today, are we tied to certain areas today? Can we move about? Yeah, we can. Right. So do you think, is that a long-term effect? Yes. It's a very, very long-term effect, because that's a thousand years, that effect. But it only started there. It, it's nice to have that sort of bit of space in the lesson to chat to them, really. It's glad that they were able to kind of even access sort of know the, the historian's views rather than just taking it from the textbook or whatever. Everyone will read their assessment and the comments at the bottom. Hello. Good, Good to see, to see you. you. How are you? Which bit is it you're assessing and you focus your mark scheme in on that? Because if you try to take the level, the levels encompass so many different things, but you're not marking all of those things. No. What do you think of that? Hey? <laughs> Historian and the mate, you know what? Yeah. Okay.